King Winslet's lost looked out on the feast of Stephen, when the snow lay round about, deep and crisp and even. Brightly shone the moon that night, though the frost was cruel, when our poor men came in sight, gathering winter fuel. Did we ever sing this in choir? No. Okay. Uh, page and stand by me if thou knowest telling yonder peasant who is he where and what is dwelling I don't recall ever hearing this anywhere outside of you singing it to yourself all the time but I've heard I know the song yeah it's a it's a classic Christmas carol I feel like we sang it in show choir one year I was never in show choir I know you weren't I, I meant like me oh I don't know Anybody from Booty Show Choir? Ashley Monroe? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, you <laughs> <Nick> know, <laughs> 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 those guys just jamming out to <laughs> fucking old King Winslet. I don't, I don't see that happening. And in the bitter way. Any, uh, any Booty Show Choir members? You know, ot oh three to oh six. Let me, you know, hit us up, comment yeah. uh, in the All section you below. Age people now. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> let uh, let us know if we ever sang Good King Winslet yeah. around. I don't know. Miss Jones, if yep. you're listening, did we ever sing this? I don't know. That was we'll ta- 20 we'll years her on ago. Facebook Who knows? and say that we, uh, we, we mentioned her. Freeze thy bloodless coldly. I don't ever... I don't... I don't know how we'd sing this. You could sing it a cappella, I guess. I mean, you do it all the time. I it's do. Just off key. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that don't know, Gary is my favorite singer. I, I am. If I had to choose between Gary and John Mayer or... Freddie Mercury to lead my band, I would choose suicide. Ah, oh. I also get chosen. Actually, for... I'd probably just choose the other two guys and not yeah. you. I also get chosen for fantasy football a lot. You do, <laughs> yes. Courtesy of our friend Nick Alessandro, he enjoys choosing you in uh, you know, the last round for some reason. Yes. And then because at all of the fantasy football leagues, I love it how that's our background music. Yes, when we're talking about fantasy football. <laughs> None of the fantasy football leagues allow you to add in random people. You obviously really? have to draft. Well, yeah. I mean. Yeah, I mean, I guess. The, the game is based around NFL players. Yeah. Like, they're not going to let you put well, in Courage the Cowardly Dog or true. I would like to Fred give Flintstone. a shout out to Nick and Kaylin, who recently got married. Hey, shout out to Nick and Kaylin. Thanks for getting married and not inviting us. Yeah, uh, we really appreciate not being at your wedding, not being a part of your lives. And Thank like, you so yeah, much. exactly. So you guys are great. We hold no resentment None towards you at all, whatsoever. And thanks for being just the wonderfully great people we know you to be. Yes, yes. Super happy by that. Uh, j- in, in other news, Gary's tree is finally up. My tree is his, finally his up. Charlie Brown, uh, his Tw- little Charlie Brown 24 inches tree. of glory. 24 inches of glory. Three ornaments. Yep. Um, sitting on top of the same spot every year. Every year. Seven seven years you've been here? Eight years? 2012. So eight, eight years. years. Wow. Eight wow. Years. My God. Eight years you've been here. Eight wow. years that tree has been in the exact same spot. <laughs> yep. Every, every time. Was that the first tree you got like when you moved in? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really? It's pre-lit. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, it's, it's fake, so... Yeah. Of course it's pre-lit. I mean, yeah. I mean, not all fake trees are pre-lit. You know, we put up... So, for those of you that have never been to Gary's house, and most of you obviously haven't... Obviously. His entire living room is lit by Christmas lights that are just hanging on the walls, and they encircle the entire living room, uh, and they are they're like the white icicle lights that you might find... At Walmart for three dollars. Yeah, for like four. Yeah, four bucks for like a hundred of them. Yeah, it's It's, wonderful. It's really great. We we did that when I was living here a while back, like one Christmas, and never took them down. down. Yeah, because it 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 illuminates the entire room way better than those two lamps you have sitting by the couch. Yeah, I highly recommend it to uh, anybody listening to uh, use uh, sort of that. I don't know track lighting, line lighting. I don't know. I guess so. I don't know how bad or how high your electric bill gets every year. Um, uh, it's my, uh, during the winter, I normally keep the uh, heater off and usually it's like, uh, I normally do like, uh, 26 to $30 uh, a month. And then they tack on the surcharges, of course. Thank you, city of Austin. (laughs) Uh, Gary, I want you to tell us about your favorite Christmas song. My favorite Christmas song is good King Winsless. Okay. Why is it your favorite Christmas song, Gary? Uh, I like the tune to it. I I think it's got a good message to it. Um, it's fairly short. It's probably I don't know, minute and a half or so, unless you just start rifting, I guess, in it. Um, and uh, it's got a, a a pretty simple range. I mean, I don't think you need to be a Pavarotti to sing it. So, 
Uh, yeah, and it's Irish, and Irish songs are really great because they're always so chipper and cheerful, and they're always talking about like horrendously sad things. So I like Irish music. Tell us, Gary, I want you to tell us something really interesting that no one else in the world finds interesting with the exception of you. You got to find one thing. Johnny Blackburn. Well, that's just not true. Everybody wants uh, to hear about me. I don't know. Let me tell you guys a story. Oh, let about me when I was tell you the tale. Sit down on old Grandpa's knee, kiddo, and I'll tell you about a day long past. Many moons ago. Many moons ago. Have you ever wondered, have you ever wondered if a tap dancer walks into a room, do they look at the floor and say, I'd tap that? I often have wondered, <laughs> like, who would win, a tap dancer or a clogger? At what? At a, uh, a kickboxing. At life. A kickboxing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, I, I think the tap dancer's think got the, the speed. the clogger might win. But the clogger's got the strength, I think. The clogger has the strength, but to my knowledge, aren't clogging shoes, aren't they pure wood? I've never, I've tap danced. I've tap danced for years, but I'd never. You've I've never, never clogged? I've never clogged before. Oh, my gosh. You've clogged? When the hell did you clog? I've never clogged, but oh, what? I would love you, to do that. So <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be so uncomfortable and so much fun. I mean, it's a wooden shoe. I mean, it is a wooden shoe. Yeah. But it was, you, you just said it. You were just like, duh, you've never clogged before? Well, I mean, you know. <laughs> no, I have never clogged before either. But I would be absolutely down for that, if at all possible. Um, <laughs> all right. I'm going to... So we're bringing in a special guest tonight. Oh. Uh, an, an old buddy of mine. My oh. good buddy Luke is going to be joining Luke, us. Luke, all right. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> we couldn't get any other guests. <laughs> Nobody so. else wanted to get Nobody on. Nobody else wanted to jump on. Uh, <laughs> well, that's okay. It's nearly Christmas. <laughs> it's nearly Christmas. Uh, he enjoys he enjoys shitting on Christmas movies and Christmas archety- archetypes, so I think we'll have a good, lively discussion tonight with the movies that he has seen, which I don't know how many there are. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> Oh, I'm not. I'm not even in the Discord group. Where no, are I'm the Get only in, one Johnny. in here. All right, I'm all by myself. I'm all, all by myself. myself. I don't want to be all by myself anymore. Can we just like sing the whole episode? Let's just sing Christmas carols the whole time. Let's make up our own Christmas song. Do you want to? Oh, God. Let's make up our own Christmas song. Who wants to hear us sing a Christmas song about nothing? Everybody raise your hand. Okay. Okay. I mean, yeah. That's, there's that's, only two of us that's, here that's right 100% now. That's 100% unanimous. Uh, Neil, uh, Neil's, Neil's absent this week, unfortunately, but he's here with us in spirit, like always. Should we just use a tune from a common song? Uh, sure. What's What's your favorite one that's not Good King Let's. let's I don't want to sing Let's make King a Christmas Wins. song to Flintstones, Meet the Flintstones. Okay, you do the first. You do the first. The first line of the the first line of the co- chorus, and then. Oh God! Um. Oh God! Or the first uh, verse, I guess. Okay. Or you want me to start? Uh, Christmas, it's Christmas time. Gonna buy a lot of presents, yeah. From the town of Earth, we're gonna be sitting right here till Jesus's birth. There you go. Let's shop at the Alta down the street. Gonna wash our dirty fucking feet When you're shopping, shopping Christmas, Christmas You'll have a savings a Lots of savings You'll have lots of savings, savings yeah. yeah Actually, why the hell would people have savings on Christmas? That makes no sense I mean, isn't Christmas one of the most expensive Painstakingly, but, excruciatingly but, expensive times of your life? But when you buy more stuff you save more no, money. You're thinking of you're thinking of buying in bulk. <laughs> yeah. That's buying more stuff. If I buy all of these things, then I'll save yeah. money if in I the long run. Buy ten thousand Q tips and give them out as Christmas presents. That's all you need to do. <laughs> all right. Hey, I think I think we got him. I, I Luke, I see your I see your name pop up. Can I can hear you? Can you hear me? Oh my God! I can hear him. Gary, can you hear him? I can hear you. Hi, Luke. Good, good, good. I'm glad because thank. Have got to be said, and I'm the man who needs to say them. You're the man that needs to say them. Yeah, uh, I appreciate I didn't even that. Completely tell you what we're talking about this episode, but you're Boom. the man that we come no, to, and people need to hear random crap that they probably don't give a shit about. That's right. You know what? I followed the link, which means I'm already. That's what more than most people. <laughs> that's true. So already, uh, we, yeah. We've already we've already talked about that. Outside of my mother and Ian, nobody listens to this podcast. 
That's not true. We actually have a lot more followers <laughs> yeah. than that. I listen to it. <laughs> you do listen. I listen well, to you it edit for the hours fucking thing. You listen. Hours. You, you edit horrible. the fucking episode. It's absolutely Every terrible. week you edit the fucking show. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, look, All right. My last, my last YouTube video got zero views. So there you go. Dude, I'm sure that if you, you know what, I can bring that audience over here. Cross That's right, baby. That's right. You know, we you can. You're more than welcome to plug your uh, your show. And uh, you know our our thirty <laughs> weekly listeners, maybe maybe a couple of them will will start watching yeah, you. We'll Who move knows? On over. Uh, what? Uh, tell us a little bit about your YouTube channel, there, Luke. What do you What do you do? No, you know what? Because this is how I'm going to rationalize this fragile ego. If you don't know, then you don't know. People who need okay. to know know, and that's what's why. <laughs> okay. okay, I got gotcha. you. Okay, so so it's it's not about it's not about educating your potential audience and you know trying to market it or anything. Just people need oh, to know no, if they if they don't know they're too stupid. Purely, just fuck them. Right, purely self indulgence. That's what this is all about. Okay, I, I like it. I like it. <laughs> Jesus, that's what the Christmas time is all about. I'm the so, Christmas time. Oh, uh, Christmas time. The Christmas time. No, no, no. Have, we were just. Cards. No, no, no. What? Cards. See, it's about cards. It's about carts or cards? Christmas cards, C A R D S. It's oh cards, cards. Okay, it's about, yeah, it's about yes. Christmas cards. Okay, that's what the holiday season is about is is about Christmas cards. Well, not I mean not every holiday season, but I Christmas. I would, I don't, you know, like Easter is about Christmas cards. Easter is so about Christmas cards. Halloween is also about Halloween is actually about Easter cards, and the Fourth of July is well, it's just about America. Do, so. do they have Easter cards? I, yeah, of course they have I Easter can't. cards. Yeah, they have Easter cards. Oh, of course they. You've never seen Easter card like at Hallmark? They have like the different sec. They're sectioned off. Oh like, yeah, like two, I three rows so, at yeah. a time, and they. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know if I've ever bought one for anybody or received one myself, but I mean, why not? You, you don't have some bunny special in your life. If I wanted to get another co-host, what would I have to do? Would I have? Would you have, have to go to... on a Tinder or Craigslist. Um... What Tinder? <laughs> I have to go on Tinder for. I am on Tinder. I'm looking for a co-host. <laughs> this isn't a euphemism. I'm actually looking for a co-host. No. Hold on. I found a bell. <laughs> do, do you have to? Do you have to ring the bell every time? Is yep. it like like ra ra raising your hand in class? Why are you shaking a bell? I don't know. You said there's a bell on the table. We each have to have our own bell have to have our own bell like i have a bell of a certain pitch and then gary has a bell and then we ring at the same time and then johnny <laughs> as the referee will decide which ring he heard first and then yep. that person gets to speak and the other person is to shut the fuck up okay i'm also, fine with that also fun fact bell is my favorite disney princess I had I honestly it's a different see, bell, stupid. Yeah, it is a different bell, you jackass. <laughs> Look, I had always thought it was Elsa from Frozen because you've got her portrait up in your room. So it's a poster. A portrait would be awesome though. Maybe I can get a portrait I, I, for Christmas. I use the word portrait very loosely <laughs> because knowing you, if somebody offered to like do full caricature or paint a portrait of Elsa, so you and I are there, do there's it. This, there's this company called, I think it's called like Paint Your Life. Wouldn't it be great if you like if you sent it in and you were like paint for, Paint me with Elsa like she's my wife or something. The artist would be like, what the oh my fuck? God. <laughs> and that's how you get all the ladies, Gary. <laughs> oh my, I may have to do that. That sounds pretty awesome. You should totally create a Tinder profile and just use that as your Tinder profile. Just you and Elsa in a fucking portrait. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful oh wonderful my God, that's horrible uh, all right enough of, enough of this shit let's get started on this week's episode hey everybody welcome back to another episode of i don't give a flick i'm your host johnny blackburn alongside me as he is every week unfortunately is my co-host gary elmore and our other co-host neil riley is unfortunately not with us this week but he is here in spirit and we will be back with him next week this week we are pleased to welcome <laughs> last minute edition of the <laughs> show and uh, a good buddy of mine uh, Luke. Luke Wilson. Oh, no. <laughs> Luke Wilson. No. Oh, no, no. That would be amazing. <laughs> that would. Do you, you don't mind any chance no Luke Wilson, do you, Luke? Of course I do. All Lukes know each other. You that's, know what I was, oh. that's what I was hoping. I was hoping it was like an exclusive club, because I know Johnny Depp. Yeah. And Johnny I know, Storm. I know Gary Oldman, Gary Busey, Gary oh. Sinise. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> that's great. Do you know Gary Bertier? 
Uh, no, but I do know Gary Johnson. He's if a little you, weird. You know Gary Johnson? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gary Johnson for president. Why not? <laughs> oh, that was fantastic. Uh, if anybody can tell me what movie Gary Bertier was in. God damn been. it. I was just thinking when you said Gary, I was like, wait, what is that reference? Oh, you know I it, know. man. Luke, I'll give you a hint. We watched this movie before we told... Bef- we watched this movie before we went and saw the others in junior high, and we offered to give those girls our urinal cakes. Yeah, Luke, do you remember 20 years ago? I don't know if he remembers. We we went out with some friends, and they had like they had a TV and DVD player inside the car, and we were sitting in the back seat, and we watched the entire movie like throughout the course of the afternoon. We were like... This like my friend's mom was driving mm-hmm. us around everywhere. Um, was it one of those cool like uh, Plymouth uh, Voyagers? Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, actually, it was. Yeah, it was the one that like flipped down. It? Yeah, mm-hmm. nice. It was pretty. It was pretty dope, man. Nice. <laughs> I, I have to say, I do like driving minivans. It's pretty awesome. You know, I actually had to drive the new Dodge Caravan for when I was doing six hundred pound life uh, uh, late last year, and I did like five or six shoots with him, and we like did like road trips, like we went across the country for different shoots. Um, but I had to drive the caravan, and it is so luxurious yeah dude. it's it so nice like it actually it has a it has a lot of pickup the turning is really tight um it's just it's real smooth ride yeah i'm it's, shocked i mean it's not built for speed it's built for comfort it's like a boat you know but you can you can you can totally you can totally do all of that though um so luke do you remember what that movie was with gary bertier it's let's just say this if you don't want me to spoil it it's let's not forget the gods before the gods that's the that's the movie was it Hercules? <laughs> Wasn't Hercules. No. Well, what's the? Uh, they were. Johnny, well, do you know what I'm getting at? What, you know I, what I'm I know. What you're, I know what you're getting at. He asked the question. Okay, okay, but but Gary. So so it sounds like Luke remembers. So okay. What what entity was said to be greater than the gods in Greek mythology? At certain times, different times. Preceding, uh, also, preceded like the, them. Okay, like the Titans. Them. Yeah, Whoa. maybe maybe like Are the Titans. Clash of the Titans. No. Oh, Rem- strong side. Oh, remember the Left Titans. Side. Remember the Titans. Oh, there okay. you go. Yeah. Right. Gary, Bert- forget. Gary Bertier was the, uh, the oh yeah the the, the, the white dude the, the linebacker dude in the that, wheelchair. Yeah, yeah that's right. That crippled. Touchdown. Yeah, yeah. That that was was the good. touchdowns. No, he's a linebacker, dude. He sacks the shit out of the quarterback. <laughs> no, bro. Don't you remember he was in the wheelchair and he called Hut and then he would roll back and he would throw the touchdowns. <laughs> yeah, man. Of yeah. course. If you had that's to, how that works. If you had to guess who got paid the most on a football field, you'd guess the quarterback and Correct. you'd be right. You would be right. But the second most person is the left tackle. Very good. Yes, yeah, Sandra wait, Bullock wait. taught me that. Sandra Bullock taught you that. That's right. You only wait, remember that because on. the blind side. Yes. But. No joke. Well, Isn't it the coach? No, 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 no. The coaches gets paid way less than most of the players. Like it's an insane amount. Like even there's probably like, God, I would say that there's probably close to at least 10 positions. There's, there's 22 positions on a football field. And I would say probably half or more than half of them get paid more yearly. All player, I mean, I understand hype. I understand like Aaron Rodgers, Mike, but like no, Joe, Schm- Joe Schmo from f- right. but fuck nowhere. Who's just lineman. Number two, he's getting more than I, 50% most, of the time is getting more than the coach. Most L- of the time, Luke, yeah. if you'd like us to schedule you on there's no crying in podcasting, we can. But this is not a sports <laughs> podcast. I think we, that's we've true. Really done like three episodes of that one. This is good. This is this is the layman's. This is like the dude is like, you know what they should do with the football? They should have more points and more scoring because they're going to be more winning. I don't know. I just this is my layman's like, yeah, OK, sure. Coach, you, whatever. You guys know anyway. what's how how you win the football game is by scoring more points than the other team. Well, football is all built around three things. The offense, the defense and the special teams. Thanks, John. <laughs> Thanks, John. That <laughs> reminds me of a I joke. You were going to say offense, <laughs> no. defense and the winning. <laughs> <laughs> offense, defense and not losing. Sorry, Gary. What did you say? That reminds me of a joke. Oh, God. Luke, have you ever heard Gary's potato joke? Yes. Yes, I have. So you know what? Let's not repeat it now because I've already heard it. Luke, I don't believe you, but you're the only person to actually say you have when you clearly have not. So I will not subjug- subjugate you, know what, you to that. You know what? You have no proof. <laughs> you uh, don't I, have any proof. I, I, I have I no don't. way of proving this either. I have no way of proving this. Uh, anywho. <laughs> anywho. The, Christmas archetypes. <laughs> so uh, so uh, for this week's episode, um, uh, we like I said, we, we welcome, Luke to the, welcome Luke to the show. And this week, uh, this is our... Hopefully, we're going to try to fit in one more episode uh, towards the end of the month. Uh, we got like a, about a week till Christmas at this point. Yeah. Almost I, a week exactly. We probably have one more like wrap up for 2020. We'll try to get, yeah. We'll try to, yeah, we'll try I to mean, get something did, in. Did anything happen in 2020 that's not of really. worth note? No. I don't know. We yeah. had like, 
what killer hornets or something. I don't remember. That, oh, I was going to yeah. mention that earlier that the killer <laughs> the, that the murder hornets, <laughs> murder uh, hornets. Can, can kill That's a right. bunch of bees like if they get in there. But the bees can fight back by they they all get on the murder hornet That's and right. then they, and start they start vibrating. Gyrating. Yeah, they start vibrating and heat, together. And it heats up and melts the murder hornet. It kills a lot of the bees, but yeah. Um, so that was that was a nice little. Bees you are know. a fascinating insect. It's it's all. Yeah. Okay, I don't want to get into yeah. that. But yes, that that, that is interesting. Join us for a podcast on bees. <laughs> <laughs> We're spanning called off the buzz line. Called the buzz line. Um. Anyways, so for this week's episode, uh, to round out our yes. Christmas, our Christmas, our month of Christmas. Uh, spectacular, wondrous, I don't know, we didn't really Emporium. Have Emporium. Christmas special. Of the month. Yes, blue uh, light. We will be uh, discussing uh, Christmas archetypes in both story and character, uh, shitting on probably a fair amount of them, but also giving, showing some love, yeah. showing some love yeah. to the ones that we, uh, we still hold near and dear to our hearts and we actually find somewhat clever, even though they've been overdone for the last 70 years. Okay, eight, yeah. You know, 80 years throughout throughout Hollywood. So for this one, uh, this actually, this topic this week was brought to us by Gary. So Gary, I am going to let you take the lead for this week um, and go on ahead and and show us what's going down. Okay. So what do, what do we got this week? What's uh, what do you got? What do you got on your mind? Okay, yeah. So uh, I thought it would be interesting to talk about the archetypes of Christmas, meaning not only the ar- archetypes in in sense of uh, like the plot, but the characters as well, because okay. I think that we have very defined roles for many of the uh, ideas and concepts in Christmas movies, and you know you just kind of can really write around those very easily by knowing, okay, I'm going to write a character like Ebenezer Scrooge. You already know everything you need to know about the character and then you can just place him in whatever scenario you want to and i think those archetypes uh they're very powerful uh and they resonate with people in western culture at least and they can often get overused we brought uh, luke on because he is just an absolute genius and uh, uh very aware of uh, literature and all things human and he just loves christmas films and this stories so true. much he just he just loves them I, I, Luke, absolutely I, adores them. and 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 i am being completely facetious he, he does not but i do want to know when was the last time you you did watch a christmas film just out of curiosity hmm. gosh you know that's a good question um now so for the judges can a christmas <laughs> film be a film that takes place in quarter four of fiscal year whatever year it is or does it have to involve themes like family and togetherness well, you, you can just watch the last episode we did or listen to oh I, but luke i have a question for you this is very important <laughs> yes sir lay it on me okay is die no. hard a christmas movie i was just gonna you know what i was gonna Were say you thinking that Oh, oh, God, I don't even know. You know what? I'm going to say this because it's good content. Um, mm. So I've I've heard this argument before. Yep, the trouble we, is yep. I've never seen Die Hard all the way through. What? So, uh, yeah. What? So you, th- That one surprises me, man. You what? out of all people. I know. I know. I've seen the famous scenes. I've seen the fa- – but I've never sat down and put it on and just said from the beginning to end. Now, I will say this. From what I've seen of Die Hard, and I know this means nothing, but I'm going to throw it out there because, you know what, outsiders look, uh, definitely works as a Christmas movie. All right. I appreciate as that. trappings Luke. of a Christmas movie, from what I've seen, from what I've seen, and this is important, <sighs> the messages are not important. It's about the snow, and it's about the tinsel and the blinking lights oh, and whatever it is. Hell no. As long as, as long as the background gives you that feeling of Christmas, you can, you can reasonably make the case that it's a Christmas movie. So would you say that Eyes Wide Shut is a Christmas movie? It's got, like, Christmas lights and trees and everyone. Movie. I mean, you know we what? had this such it's a heated a, debate last week about this. <laughs> it's a going. darker, it's a darker Christmas movie, but it's, you know what? Okay, so you don't, don't want to get into semantics, but is it a movie you can play at Christmas time? Sure. Is it a Christmas movie in the sense that it carries over themes of what Christians would generally call Christmas? Uh, maybe, depending on how far back with your weird Christian history you want to go with sex rituals and all that shit. But, I mean, it's, how are you guys defining it? Is it something that celebrates family and togetherness and, and exchanging gifts? Is that what a Christmas movie is? Or is it just something that has these archetypes in it that we can pick up on? 
And you know, we 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 kind of talked about that at length the last time we we had a. Our oh, last I wasn't podcast. on the show last time. Man. I know, I know. I'm not so, one of the four people who listens. So what the <laughs> fuck do I know? I'm not but, Johnny's mom. <laughs> so uh, I I think uh, on that we ended up agreeing that um, you know overall it's does the movie make it feel like uh, like Christmas for you? I think was the ultimate decision that we kind of that, came that seemed up. to be the general consensus That's between tough. the panel around yeah. the panel was that it was subjective because yeah. neil had even brought up he's like the only a small portion of lethal weapon has any christmas in right, it at all yeah. but i watch it every christmas because i i've been watching it since when i was a kid my dad and i used to watch it on christmas it's a tradition every year it's a tradition yeah and for me personally i was kind of alone in the crowd um i guess up two weeks ago um when ian was on we we did talk about that and he agreed with me but um we had I had mentioned that if it's something that if you take Christmas out of the story, mm -hmm. if you take Christmas and you put in another holiday or another random day of any year, doesn't well, it matter. Still work. The story would still work, and that's why, as much as I love yeah. "It's a Wonderful Life" and I've watched it on Christmas Eve, Eve every year since I was a kid, I don't necessarily think it's a Christmas movie. Okay. I really don't, and it's it's rated number one on all these lists. But it doesn't mm -hmm. matter if you take Christmas out of that. It's just a story about a guy finding himself and. You know, it's it's. I mean, if you look at it, it's about depression and and suicidal thoughts. Christmas. And it's not. <laughs> some people for. The, yeah, I mean, yeah, that is true. Suicides and depressions are very high for people who don't have. <laughs> That's something true. Something to go to on Christmas, but then let me ask you this: following that train of logic, what about Home Alone Two Christmas movie? Oh, uh, and we 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 actually brought this up last we week. Did. It's so funny you mentioned this. We talked about this last week. Um, I had said. It was still a Christmas movie because it's. I mean, it, it follows. It follows if the first one. If you take Christmas to out, that's the thing. If you take Christmas out, it's basically the first one in a different setting. Right. So by you, that rationale, it's you, by, you took by a summer you, vacation or something. Like the family just took a summer vacation. Yeah, right. you could replace the Christmas. Point with is, that. The point yeah. is, he's in a hotel in New York by himself. It could be the Fourth of July. Christmas I, is the dressing on the salad. Okay. Now, good summer vacation movies. Uh, did anyone ever see Dirty Dancing? Now, that was a great movie. That, Yeah, Gary, Dirty Dancing was a pretty good movie. Yeah. That, and that is not an archetype that we are talking about today. <laughs> did you have, like, a shitload of Ridlin before this episode or something? Like, <laughs> I had a monster. I had like, a monster. Here's, the, like. here's the thing about gyrating murder hornets and bees, okay? Let's talk about how to melt a murder hornet. Give me just a second to, to tell you guys how this works. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I... Uh, yeah, so, so yeah, for Home Alone 2, yeah, I, I could... You could convince me that it definitely was not a Christmas movie at its core. Mm -hmm. Um... But see, that's where I take exception with that definition because I don't think I think like any good story is not dependent on is not too dependent on one element, right? So sure. any so exactly. like I don't know if any of you guys have watched Cobra Kai, but I'll use this as an example. You can yeah. take karate out of Cobra Kai. It could be a tennis match. It could be a chess match. It doesn't matter. The point is, it's the drama between these two protagonists who've had this issue since they were kids, and it goes it. The drama is built around the the human dynamic and the character dynamic and the karate is just is just a decoration. Yeah. And I wonder, is that not the same case here? Like, isn't it just kind of need that decoration? Every script, like though, you, ever like that's well, that's I, that's, I, that's any good, story ever. Like if right, you take out all the elements, don't like, rely. No, 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 well, no. Yeah. Good scripts I, I, don't rely too much on one particular element. Oh, for sure, absolutely. Right. Yeah, so no, I'm, I'm agree with what, you. What I, and what so I think, in order for it to be a Christmas movie, it kind of has to have. I think it's almost the opposite. It has to have that one. If it doesn't have that sort of feel, like if there's not snow and if there's not Christmas trees, and if there's not this this sort of cliche feeling of Christmas. You know, I don't care if the theme is about family and getting together, or whatever. If it's done on the Fourth of July over the summer, it's not a Christmas movie. There has to be these superficial trappings of Christmas in right. order for it to be considered a Christmas movie. And I think that you know you can take these elements out or not, but it's a wonderful life. You know, Debatable. maybe maybe it is, maybe it is. I don't know. Yeah. I think I might, I might, I might come at you on the other way on that one. I think that it maybe it is. Gary. Yeah, I I think that ultimately it came down to is the is Christmas just a setting that uh, can be interchanged with anything else, or is it part of the theme of the movie? 
So no, like, and see, that's my position. I think it's a setting because the theme, I don't think there are any theme that you can extrapolate from Christmas. It's just a broad theme that doesn't take Christmas. It's family, it's togetherness, it's compassion. You can do that anytime. That's not unique to Christmas. Right. So, but that's what I was saying is you can do that with you can do that with with any stories you can if you take it down to its bare minimum it 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 backs up your point exactly like if you take any script down to any but it goes for anything any horror any drama any you know maybe not romance any comedy you know if you take it down to the bare minimum what's it really about is it about friendship is it about togetherness is it about rivalries is it, about a comeback yeah. story is it then, man yeah. versus man man versus oh, nature God. man oh, versus god that was such that that outs between that and our time travel episode and we just talked about oh man luke you you actually would have enjoyed our time travel episode we really well got you know back to the future if motherfuckers um, would bring me on then <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah i i think that gets back to the the uh, the archetype so then wait what was your take because i'll i'll put a flag down i'm on setting i'm my position is that it's about settings so was your take both that it's about theme well i i think what we were saying was that <laughs> Uh, if it's a setting that you can just remove and replace, then it's not necessarily a Christmas movie. Um, but if it's like a theme like how the Grinch stole Christmas is that the theme of that is based. So what's around the Christmas. theme? What's the theme on the Grinch on the Grinch stole Christmas that's specific to Christmas and not well, that is something that could not just be applied to any particular story about learning beyond oneself. Well, I mean, I mean, you, you could. It's not like the nativity story or something like that. But right, I, I'll, it's not Christmas specific. It's just about someone learning to be more than concerned with themselves. So for that, other if the trappings of Christmas weren't there, if it wasn't about taking presents and trees and lights, I would say there's nothing really particularly specifically Christmas about that story. It's just a dude who learns compassion. And because yeah. he's taking presents, because he's because he's engaging in the Christmas festivities, that makes it a Christmas movie. But the themes of the movie aren't particularly Christmas. It's just sort of a basic moral tale. Okay, so you would like a Christmas movie that's more uh, uh, classical in its um, you know interpretation, like about the birth of Jesus. No, uh, my position is the theme is irrelevant. It's the setting. Okay, so okay, so it's the exact opposite of what I was saying then. Right. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I'm disagreeing with you guys. Okay. I'm saying that the no, theme no, I, is not I, I appreciate it. that that's why that's why we brought you on. That's I mean, I've been talking to your fucking agent for months about getting your ass on here. Literally months. You're always you're always busy. I'm always you know? busy. I'm, I'm too busy know. playing company heroes, you know. <laughs> No, I'm too busy playing company heroes. <laughs> I don't know what, you're too busy playing. You gotta play roller house flipper. Day. That's a fun game. What was that really? drug, the I mean, drug dealer not, one you were doing the drug, other day? Drug simulator. Drug simulator. <laughs> drug, drug dealer simulator. Drug dealer simulator. That's ridiculous. All right. Anyways, back to. Uh, I'm not trying, back to, to, back to, I'm not trying to spit on you guys, but here, if the contention is that it's about themes and that's what makes a Christmas movie, okay. What are the themes that are specific to Christmas that you can point to me in a film and say this is an example of a specifically Christmas theme? Ergo, this is the quintessential Christmas movie because I can't really see one. Well, I mean, I, and I also, I guess it depends on, uh, in some sense, how like cynical you want to be about it, but like things like, uh, you know, uh, helping others, charity, kindness, love, opening your heart. I think those all kind of resonate towards a Christmas theme. Okay. Um, okay. Because you'll tip, you typically see people in society, you see that going up yeah, and you see most people doing those type of mm. acts during the Christmas season. Yeah. Like, like the movie Scrooge, it's about a guy that's, kind of like you know like a real cynical kind of asshole and then okay, like but can't you say so then let's let's play let's let's cut to the heart of this let's okay. not go with scrooge let's talk about scrooge and charles dickens i mean i think that's sort of the birth of the modern take on christmas anyway is this sort of late yeah, is well, you know well not late but this a mid mid to early 1800s late 1800s take on this old pagan holiday so then scrooge so is it essentially your position that the again the charitableness and the the Giving and the thinking of people and the coming togetherness that is essentially the lesson that Scrooge learns in that story, that those are the basic themes of Christmas. Because again, I look at that and I think, yeah, but those are basic human tales, right? Like you can forgiveness and being together with family, 
those are tales that you could tell on the 4th of July. Those are moral yeah. quandaries that you can have. And it's not particular to Christmas, right? right? And that's what I was saying earlier, though, is if you if you go based off and and I'm, I'm actually not arguing with you on that. You are. You, I mean, I agree with you. You're correct. But if you do that with any story at all, if you're breaking it down to the bare bones, if you're breaking it down to those themes, then you can do that with with any story ever. And then basically all stories are the same, technically. So then like, what is your position, Johnny? Is yours that it's setting or is yours I, that it's theme? And uh, yeah, thank you. I was actually getting to that. Um, I, I think it's a little of both. Um, I think that it's... Sure, certain, sure. Yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, I mean, I think it's, you obviously have to have it set during Christmas time. Otherwise that makes, I think that's the most obvious though. If we're going to get down to the very bare bones to it, you have to have it set during the holidays. It has so to then you take Christmas the time. And you take and, the same themes as Gary, You that it's togetherness and charitable. Like, is that... Are you Correct. on the same? Yes, I, I am on that same bandwagon. Yeah. Um, the only the only thing that we the only thing that we had kind of disagreed on is he was he was kind of he and uh, and Neil and a couple other people on our panel last week and week before that too were saying that there's another argument saying it could be subjective, like we mentioned with mm-hmm. weapon. If it's just something you've watched since you know you yeah. were a kid and you just consistently if it's become watch your it. own tradition right and i'm just like okay well for you personally but i guess yeah, i was argument, gonna say I'm that's to a the major- personal thing yeah, yeah it to, has to, to the be masses. something that right, something the- that it, maybe if this is a maybe this is something that we can whether you're coming from setting or theme you can say that someone who doesn't have a history with this show this particular content could watch this show at christmas or could watch and, this movie at- and feel the yuletide spirit feel, yes and feel like it's christmas yeah, yeah. Yeah, and First I and I'm through. Yeah, and I and I you would be able to convince me on that if some if you were like if that was the argument and I I would I would give way I'd be like okay sure no problem if I if I watch that movie I've never seen Lethal Weapon I'm gonna watch it around the holidays if I watch it and then felt oh my god it feels like Christmas then sure that would be a Christmas movie to me but obviously I've seen Lethal Weapon a million times and I doesn't feel it's a great fucking movie I'm yeah. not saying that it's not it's it just it doesn't feel like a Christmas film um but well, yeah that no goes to, yeah. that goes to what I was saying earlier about Die Hard is that I haven't seen Die Hard all the way through right but let's say I've seen through just basic scenes on YouTube and, and the, I mean just like cultural osmosis I've seen probably half of the movie and like, like I always think Christmas like I it there's just for some reason whenever I see Die Hard it's like this I know that this is happening on Christmas because there's certain scenes with snow outside there's certain scenes because he's in the bill he's in the company building and there's a little tinsel and stuff like that yeah. so to that point yeah the you know setting I mean? search, certainly and it's it's an it's an integral part i mean absolutely i mean it's 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 paramount that you have that you have yeah the snow the presence the santa claus the deck the halls mm-hmm. the music so i take yeah. it if you made a movie about being together and about being about being charitable and about all those things but you if but you placed it in april or in may nobody would say oh this is a christmas movie people would say oh this is a movie about how just to kind of have basic human right. decency that, that's why i was saying i think it you really have to and that gary was mm-hmm. here this is where gary and i did agree the other week is that yeah i think it has to have both elements it have to it has to have that setting mm-hmm. and the themes that you're currently talking right, about yeah. with the togetherness the charitable acts family is more important than you know superficiality yeah. with gifts and whatever yeah um, and to the point is there a movie that has the setting it doesn't have the theme. I was just, I can't think There's immediately of something. You know, there, other than it, things that are trying to be ironic, you know, like oh, Bad right. Santa or something. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and it's funny, it's funny that you had said that. There was a movie that I really fucking hate called Christmas with the Cranks. Um, yes, I remember yeah. that. Yes, yeah. yes. Tim Allen and Jamie Lee Curtis. And yes, yes, you, yes. you would think with the cast that they had uh, that it would have been a, a really fun flick. I like the first so Santa Claus didn't... movie. But Why did, it, yeah, because the Santa Claus, that's like a classic. I mean, to my yeah, mind, that's is, a classic yeah. Christmas movie. Absolutely. But, but it, the that problem, hits all the beats. Yeah. And the problem the problem with Christmas with the Cranks was it had um, the superficiality of just over decorating to. What was the plot? What I was guess, the movie? It basically it was this family that their entire block was over the top hyped for Christmas time, and they had a uh, it was like the homeowners Associ- association hosted a Christmas lights bonanza and a contest every year. Whoever had the most elaborate Christmas setup would win X amount of dollars, or it was like a trophy or something yeah, like that. Yeah. I haven't seen it in like two years. Um, but these guys have two decided- years. <laughs> yeah. You saw it like two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was the only time I watched. It. I watched it one time. Um, cause everyone was like, you have to see okay. Christmas with the cranks. And I'm like, okay, I love Christmas movies. And then I hate it. It's like my least favorite Christmas film ever now. But, uh, anyways, they, Jamie Lee yeah, Curtis okay. and Tim Allen 
decide to not do it that year because their daughter isn't coming home for Christmas, so they decide to take a cruise and take a break. Uh, then the daughter, the the neighborhood, like, they're the only house not doing it, and so the neighborhood is like, no, you need to do this. It's part of the homeowner association. Like, it's in our contract, and it's part of the manual. Like, when you move in, you you have to do this. And they're like, I'm not going to do it. You can't force me to sell my house or find me. And Actually, so, a homeowner's so, association <laughs> can yeah, do and they that. Can't, but it, <laughs> let's, 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 suspend belief. It's a movie. Get suspend get belief. A, yeah. HOAs can get on your ass. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> And so they, they end up, uh, the daughter ends up uh, coming back for Christmas at the last minute, and so they have to put that together along with, like, their big Christmas Eve party they have every year. Um, and it's literally just about them fighting off their neighbors and trying to, I guess, they I'm, I'm, I, I don't know, I didn't really, there may be, like, some deep theme, I just didn't pick up on it because I hated it so much. It just, it took a really fun, heartfelt idea and cast like if I looked at right, that cast yeah. on paper without knowing the story, I would be like, "Oh, cool that that sounds that sounds pretty entertaining." Like I, I love these guys and their individual things they've done. Let's check it out. And it just completely yeah, fell flat Aykroyd. on its face. Dan Aykroyd, that's right. He was he was the uh, he was the leader of the the HOA. Cheech Marin is in there. Austin mm-hmm. Pendleton. Mm-hmm. He was the stuttering attorney in uh, My Cousin Vinny. That's Do you right. That? I, and I just watched My Cousin Vinny again yeah. last night. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. For like the eighteen thousandth time, um, great. I'm not identical. That's a different attorney, <laughs> but I do love it. Absolutely identical. <laughs> um, but that that one that one definitely it didn't really have the themes. Like at the very end of the movie, Tim Allen finally makes peace with the neighbor across the street that has hated him for so many years. He gives him like the tickets to go on the cruise he and Jamie Lee Curtis were initially going to go on, and was like, "Here, you take it. My daughter's in town. I can't go now." And the guy was like, well, it leaves tomorrow morning. Thanks a lot. And the wife is like, oh, we can't go. Oh, wait, no, let's go ahead because it was really nice of him. Yay, happy Christmas, everyone. And that was it. That was the end of the movie. And Who says happy Christmas? It's Merry Christmas. That's a British thing. That's a British thing. That's why it was that horrible. That's why we broke away from them, okay? (laughs) Slimy fucks. Oh, wait, I can't. Can Um, I? I don't know. Can I swear? Yeah, I don't yeah know. that's Oh, yeah. Fine. Wait, there's explicit. Wait. I've already dropped the F-bomb like three times. <laughs> yeah, you, okay. There's explicit language. For okay. sure. So then let me run this by you because <laughs> this is some. This is a tradition that I've had in my family for a long time. Oh, I think and I, I didn't know that this was a thing, but I see it on social media and on, on the Twitter sphere and whatnot. So my family, as far back, one of the earliest movies that I can remember watching in my life is Christmas Vacation. Oh, yeah. And God, we would watch Christmas happen. Vacation every every Christmas. We would get together and we'd watch it. And I watch it now as an adult, and I think, right. boy, this movie does not have much to offer. There's a, there's basically the Chevy Chase freak out, and there's Randy Quaid being Randy Quaid. But the rest of he it is just this. got his own movie in the like, sequel. <laughs> yes, yeah, Christmas yeah. Vacation Ooh. 2, Cousin Eddie's Island or whatever Island, that was. That's right. yeah, but, yeah. like, like – I watched it growing up. You know, when I was when I was four, that shit was hilarious. So did sure. you guys watch it? Was this something that was treated as a serious Christmas movie in your households? It was more of like a no, no kind of like it wasn't know, a movie. So that you like guys was, didn't watch it, you but you were aware of it. Say, sorry, Gary. Was, it, Gary it, it wasn't like a I have to watch this for Christmas, like um a Christmas story. You know, Same. Yeah, well, my, yeah, in my household, a Christmas yeah, story. Christmas yeah. story. But that it, it's it, for life work. But, yeah. but, but it was something that like you know, I might catch it. I might not, you know? Yeah. Uh, my, yeah. I mean, my, my family never really, my parents weren't really into Chevy chase films in particular. Um, my dad loved Bill Murray, but you know, there was always that beef between the two of them. Um, so yeah. my dad just, we just, we never, I, I saw like all of Bill Murray's films before I was 20, you know, but, uh, I hadn't seen a Chevy chase film until I was after 20, I think <laughs> so my parents just never watched it. My dad just hated him. Um, yeah, but I mean, I've seen, I honestly, I, I still love Chris. I love Christmas vacation as an adult. I, I think it's still, it still holds up pretty well. Um, but at the end of, I understand what you're talking about. That superficiality that we were talking about with Christmas with the cranks. He's just overdoing it with the decorations. He's overdoing. He has this, he has this idea in his head of the perfect Christmas. Mm-hmm. With his well, the cliche family, family drama the cliche, of like, Oh, exactly. he doesn't get along with the stepmom, but right. she's a perfectionist. Exactly. And blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But at the very end, it does come back to what we talked about as being one of those key elements. Family is the only gift you need. Togetherness. Right. Yeah. At the 
very yeah. end, that's what it is about. Um, and now whether or not you like it or not, that's subjective. I mean, that's all for what, that's whatever. I mean, that's all personal stuff. But uh, I think it does hold up because of that element, personally. Yeah, I, I would agree so with it, that. It, it makes the list as legitimate Christmas movies as far as you guys oh, are concerned. Sure. It's not just, yeah, okay, so. okay. Yeah. Okay, so then so. what was, I mean, because obviously everybody had, you know, probably thanks to TBS, but like, Everybody had a Christmas story going on, I assume. And yeah, TNT, house, yeah. TNT right? played it. Or TNT, yeah, yeah because right. – and, and God, I mean, who doesn't love a Christmas story? But, you know, I'm looking at this uh, you know, this archetype. I don't see anything on here that a Christmas story falls under, and I would say that is one of the – dare I say the quintessential Christmas stories is a Christmas story. Absolutely. And do you see anything on this list of archetypes that you so kindly shared with me that that story falls under? Nor dare I say anything that Christmas Vacation falls under. Yeah, well, the Christmas, yeah, the Christmas archetypes that we had, I think that was the the second one was a character archetype, um, but the well, story one and two are yin and yang, right? Yeah, one and two are yin, are yin and yang. It's like the negative Christmas energy, the positive, and then the Scrooge. I almost wonder, is that even fair to be an art the miser? Because it's like, okay, just because people have ripped off Charles Dickens, that doesn't mean it's it's an archetype necessarily. It just means that everybody, you know, uses that kind of cliched character of Scrooge. So I don't know. I could be wrong, but I feel like, can you think of another, another miser other than Scrooge? Like, isn't Scrooge basically the Fred. miser? He's the, he's the quintessential. Sorry, good. Yeah. Good. Scrooge Wait, who McDuck? else is there, right? Yeah. They might as well have just said Scrooge. Right. I mean, and so you so um Fred Claus, I know that's not as a well known one, but uh Vince okay. Vaughn plays yeah. Santa Claus's brother yeah. with Paul Giamatti. And it's not as well known. Isn't he more trickster? I feel like he's more trickster. But it but it's that it's that same it's that same thought process of he hates the holidays and he pretends to like it so he can trick his brother into doing X, Y, and Z. You know. Um I'm trying to think of other folks. I mean, a lot of God, I'd say a fair amount of antagonists in films not a fair amount i guess but a good amount they hate they hate yeah, christmas they want nothing true. to do with it they're that's true. they're all bah yeah, humbug yeah. all year round that's um, true i didn't think about that i was thinking about protagonists who go through an arc but you're right certainly yeah, the, the, the christmas just... antagonist could be my you could argue that the boss in christmas vacation who doesn't give out uh, right. christmas bonuses is brother, a miser. Yeah. he gives him yeah, a coupon yes, bill murray's brother that's right he does give him that subscription to yeah the, it's like the a tea. yeah the, the, no, the, it's the, what is the it? jello of the month club yeah the jello of the month club there you go yeah i mean that's, that's <laughs> pretty <laughs> nice he didn't have to do that subscription to jelly of the month club <laughs> <laughs> fucking chill <laughs> oh my god um, shitter so, was full <laughs> <laughs> shitter's full uh, so, so Gary, you, you were you were going on a second ago about um, the archetype that you were you were looking at closely, um, and which one yes. was popping up to you first? Oh, uh, on the uh, on the list that you sent. Yeah, I, I either one. Yeah. Oh, well, I was Whatever saying. Yeah, I, I'd kind of been been going through uh, my head on like just some plot archetypes that I you know that I think of for Christmas um you've got like the redemption one which would be like a Christmas carol or scrooge sure. how the grinch stole christmas edward scissorhands right and then you've got one that shows the value of family or friends which it's a wonderful life the santa claus elf christmas story home alone sure ooh elf um, god that's a good one god i love elf oh Gary, don't you love? Oh. Him? Gary was shitting on Elf so hard last week. Okay, I, got, I, yeah, we, I we didn't got catch so, this. Mm, we got the, so heated. At the <laughs> risk of not of offending the audience who might already have heard this, what's your basic basic TLDR? What's your beef with Elf? Yeah, I just I didn't. I don't have a problem with like any like the movie. I just didn't find it very entertaining. I suppose it, it wasn't funny to me. Um, but that's like not to say anything bad about like the themes of the movie or anything like that. I just <laughs> not to say anything bad about the movie, but I just didn't find it but funny who, or entertaining. It was a big or pile engaging. of shit. Yeah, you know, I, it was terrible. No, <laughs> it, it, and what what I was trying to say, I guess, was it, it wasn't like a horrible movie, but I just think it was kind of overrated. You know, I think a lot of people looked to Elf as like, hey, this is a great movie, and I'm like, yeah, it's it's a good movie, but it's like you know. Do you? Re it's not really like super great in my opinion. But do you but disagree? What? What? Uh, when you watched it, what were the moments where you were like, "Ugh, I don't know about that." Uh, 
any time that Will Ferrell was super excited about Christmas, uh, which do you is like a, Will a Ferrell chunk. or do you have, have an opinion on Will Ferrell at all? Or uh, generally, I think I do kind of like Will Ferrell. Like I like Talladega yeah. Nights. Um, you know, sure. I liked him on Saturday Night Live. Um, I liked him in um, uh, uh, Stranger Than Fiction. Well, uh, you know, Step Brothers. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, he's great in Stranger Than Fiction. He was great in Stranger Than Fiction. Yeah, I mean. I, uh, like that was a, I think his best, certainly his best like dramatic role. Yeah, you know. well, it definitely proved that he had the chops to handle something other than like over the top sort of like awkward comedy. Right. Yeah. Um, and I, for it, sure. I, yeah, I feel and we and we we talked about this. We had a uh, we had a guy named Tom Booker come on who is actually a Second City alumni, and he actually had worked with uh, Chris Farley. Uh, who, who will see? Uh, Dana Carvey. Yeah, so, uh, with Vince Vaughn and John. Fav- or no, that was Second City. Was it was that in New York or was that the Chicago troupe? That's Chicago. That's Chicago. Oh, okay, because so, I was so, say, yeah, wasn't Brown- Vince Vaughn and John Favreau? Weren't they all part of that too in the late eighties? Uh, John Favre, I thought might have been, but uh, the Groundlings is the that's the L.A. based one, mm-hmm. and I think that's where they were at. That's where like Will Ferrell and like Tina uh, Tina Fey had gotten their start. Amy Poehler. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, I know Vince Vaughn and, and uh, John Favreau got their start in like the Chicago circuit, but that was pre like swingers and all that stuff. So yeah, I you don't know, know. That, it may have been Second City. Um, but yeah, we had anyway. So we anyway, interesting episode. Um, yeah. But we had when we were talking when we were talking with Tom, one of the conversations we had gotten into was comedians and SNL alumni who had made a they were well established in the comedy circuit Mm -hmm. for their films. And then a lot of them actually did pretty well branching out into dramatic roles. Will Ferrell being one. I personally think Adam Sandler being another. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I I would agree. Yeah. Um, Anyway, sir, we're off topic, but (laughs) it's, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Um, I don't know. So, out of out of the out of the story, and we all we all have the the list, the one in particular that I highlighted. Um, out of the story archetypes, what do we think is the most overdone, or the one that you you just hate the most, the one you're just tired of seeing over and over again? Hmm. You know, um, my my least favorite, I can honestly tell you uh, at this point, is. Uh, <laughs> Um, they said that one of the articles that we had looked at was saying that they loved it, but, uh, miracles happening during the holidays. I enjoy, I enjoy the holiday magic. I enjoy the Christmas magic. That's, that's fantastic. But the fact that these one in a million shots, it's like, it's like one, it's, it's only, it's like 0.001% chance that this story will turn out right. Mm -hmm. And the most positive possible outcome is going to happen no matter what. It happens every fucking time. Well, well, and that one just drives me nuts. It's uh, just a, lo- a lot of them. Uh, I want one story where it just doesn't work out. Well, a lot it doesn't of them, work out like they think. Yeah, a, a lot of them have that where it doesn't work out like they think, and so they're like sad and walking away, and then they like meet the girl, and like you know, it ends happy, even though not the way they maybe had wished it to. End. For Christmas movies, though, like, what, is there any that pops into your head in particular? You know, that as I was of? saying that, I was trying to think of an example because that's. Uh, I guess that's an archetype I have in my head, but I I, ah. I can't like think of an example off the top of my head yeah. like that's a Christmas movie as well. Yeah, what you know what's what's funny about a lot of Christmas films over the last you know whatever twenty some odd years, mm-hmm. it's the same thing with music. If you look at all the music that's playing nonstop on like Magic ninety five point five or in department stores, most of that music is pre two thousand, pre nineteen ninety five for the most part. Yeah, for the most part, there's a couple songs here and there that aren't. Um, but it's that same way with the Christmas movies, too. Most of the classic Christmas films, with the exception of, like, An Elf or um, I'm a really big fan of Office Christmas Party. I just saw right. it for the first time yeah. recently. <laughs> thought it was hilarious. Um, I was like, this is going to be a classic. Came out a couple years ago. But it's that it's that same thing, you know. I think they've just overdone these these archetypes of, you know, miracles happen during the holidays, the adorable child, um, so you, you must know, really Prince hate Love. Miracle on 34th Street, then. <laughs> I was no, just not at all. I, I love Miracle on 34th Street. I had that it's, in the can. Good. I was thinking, like, that's the exact, that's <laughs> the quintessence of this, of right. the, you know, miracles happen on Christmas. And I just have to, you and wonder, is yeah. so much of that must have just simply been that formula worked. So 
shareholders and investors are saying, look, we know that this we need this upbeat story. We need yep. this this sort of cliche redemption arc. We need magical things to happen so people feel warm and fuzzy over Christmas. It's you Hollywood I mean? selling out It's because it, it brings in money. It's they're using that same. And we had another it's so, so funny. We had another episode, like our second episode for this first season. That was that same thing. I was talking about Hollywood selling out using the same formula mm. every single time, the mm. same script structure every single time to sell to sell film because that's it's right, always it been that way, man. You know, I know what I that's, mean? It's, that's what it's I'm saying. Easier is to, shake it up, like, shake it, do that. Like that's what I'm saying. Like this. It's a risk, post though. You know, that's, that's money. That's money that doesn't get a return, and no no investor wants that. You know. But how? You know what? At some point, I know it's been going like this for the last couple decades in particular. But at some point, some point. They're going to though these types of archetypes are going to they're going to run out and people are going to stop liking them. Whether it takes ten years or fifty years or sixty years, maybe we're dead by the time it runs out. But at some point, they're going to have to come up with something new. And I think it would be interesting to see one of these stories work out at the end where it completely doesn't work out and everything just fucks up. That would be so cool if it was a Christmas story. That would be a terrible <laughs> Christmas movie. Jeez. I would love that. Or the thing I'm wondering is like, out. why would I want to see that as as the audience yeah, member? That's why life. would I, I want to go to that? Be, like, I, I live that. I live tragedy and failure. Like, life is full of apathy and cruelty. And right, but how about... Why would I want to see that in so a let me movie? Ask you. Art so should be there what, to inspire through beauty and perfection, not to... Remind me of the dismal state of humanity that I already slog through. Right, but how come? How come we see those? We see those type of movies in film nowadays. We see these not not even all these type of films are are going to like the because Hollywood is They're cynical just... and satanic, and I don't like it. Like <laughs> you see those movies, I don't <laughs> like them. On. I don't want those movies. Like <laughs> that's I'll, somewhat tangentially. This is why Game of Thrones. I don't. Like, I don't like Game of Thrones because you walk away from Game of Thrones feeling yucky and feeling like, ugh, these dirty things and these dirty sides and of shameless. humanity. Yeah, and and I don't, shameless. I understand, <laughs> I understand that for a show about politics because, of course, that's what politicians are. But when you're talking about Christmas, I don't want to watch a Christmas movie that has if you want to watch a cynical gritty first of all if you want to if you want to be surrounded by cynical negative energy just live your life and it's all right there <laughs> i go to hollywood and i go to entertainment to get away from that art is supposed to inspire through beauty not propagandize and change minds through weird little controlled perceptions it's supposed to be there to show the best things of what we can be and inspire people to be that way it is controlled that's why perceptions, I go to art. perceptions though a lot so of time, Luke, throughout, historically, it has been, but we can break away from that. So, Luke, it's, it sounds like, um, really, uh, kind of interestingly, you really like your Christmas movies um, in, in however way you, you define w what your kind of Christmas movies are, but you really like them to be, you know, sort of the, the classic Christmas movie that, you know, good triumphs over evil, uh, there's like a positive outcome. Is that right? Yeah, probably, and it's tough because I need to be very specific. I'm not saying that you can't make good stories where evil try. I mean, obviously right. that can be, but if you're talking no, okay. about what I want when I'm in a holiday sitting film. around in the holiday, that's what I want. I want something that evokes that emotionality of Christmas. Okay. Yeah. I don't, you know, because otherwise there is no such thing as a Christmas movie. There's just... There's just good Winter stories movies. and bad stories. Winter, Winter solstice films, right? Oh, <laughs> there's there's happy holiday movies, right. you know. So <laughs> what about my but, my point with that is, is is that you you can still have that, but I, what I would like to see, and they have some Christmas movies like what I'm talking about. They're just not as popular. Why not have some movies where the end of the film does not work out like the character wanted or how the audience anticipated it to from the first. You know. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I think that's, what if, that's but obviously a fine. Right. But what about what if a, they're like, oh, I didn't get. I'll use the classic trope. Oh, I didn't get the girl. But hey, my best friend who's been here the whole time, she was the one that I was destined to be with at the end, and it's a nice surprise at the end. Or oh, I lost my job here, but I got an even better opportunity to start my own company. I mean, obviously something more interesting than that. But, but you see, that those idea. Are, I would consider that to be a traditional Christmas message, of like, oh. Good things are happening in this new year because I but did. But good X things are. My point with those archetypes is that the the ending, the resolution for classic Christmas films, 
is always obvious. You always know what's going to happen. I okay. want to see one where it's not obvious. Okay, so ju- that's so what I don't so think you just want you just want better writing, but the theme overall. <laughs> yeah, that'd not... be nice. Yeah, okay. exactly. I mean, so, I'm with you. I'm always down yeah. for good writing, but I don't think the themes need to be changed. I think the themes are fine. It's just they need to be executed more professional. Right. Okay, so you're not saying, Johnny, that. Um, you want a, a downer movie. You just want it to right. be intriguing and how it gets there. Okay. Yeah, not necessarily. Or whatever. Sure. Okay. Yeah, not necessarily. I mean, okay. you know, like you said, yeah, I mean, I'm with you know, you on Scroo- that. Like, Scrooge great. and Band yeah. Santa, both those films are great. And, yeah. Um, but it follows the same themes at the very end. You yeah. know, um, you see how it's going to play out. Scrooge in particular, it's just, it's literally a I, knockoff of A Christmas Carol. I, I, I would say that's the same thing. I would say that is one requirement for a Christmas movie that we didn't bring up in the last one. It, you really need to have a positive ending like that. Yeah, I mean, you yeah, don't... Yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay, that's good. Yeah, we did not talk about that last time. That's, that's very point. interesting. Yeah. Thank you, Luke and Johnny. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, that's that's you, why that's you, why we have yeah. Luke on here and pay him the big yeah. bucks. You, you know, his you, appearance fee is like five times larger than anybody else I know, we've ever had. I know, I know. You've opened you know? the eyes and minds of our millions of <laughs> listeners. <laughs> That's true. And oh my God. I do charge by the hour. So, you know, once 59 59 comes around, you know, oh, I got shit. nothing left. I got nothing left to say. Oh, shit. <laughs> Gary Rewind. Oh, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so outside of that, so, so Gary, Luke, and I gave, gave our, our, our thoughts on that. So, for you, as far as story archetypes go, uh-huh. what do you, what do you like seeing the most and what are you the most tired of? You know, I, uh, I do like seeing, uh, you know, New ideas, like for example, like uh, I, I'm always down to see uh, you know a, a Christmas Carol, like uh, sure. like Muppets one. I like the one with Patrick Stewart. Oh, I like the, the one Muppets with George Christmas. Scott. The Muppets you know. Christmas Carol. Michael Caine is it's yeah. so dope, dude. It's yeah. Yeah. Awesome movie. It so is. I, I, so it's that to me is the definitive Christmas Carol is the Muppets. I, one. Absolutely, I agree. But and like I like it. I like to see like how they changed that up a little bit for Scrooge. Like they, they modernized it and they changed some of the aspects of it. I, I thought that was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and it kind of kept the same, the same heart of the story. Sure. Um, so I like to see that, um, uh, sort of, uh, new takes on old tales. I, I think that you can do some really clever things with that. Um, I think you can also do some really horrible things if it's just a, like a cheap remake, like, the Little Women that they do every four years, Jesus. they remake that. Um, Merry or the Christmas, last my dears. Oh my gosh! Oh, we Luke, can't get on to a Star to have Wars you on. episode. Right? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do, do one eventually. I know oh, we, you've gosh. been talking about it for months. Do I you know. have thoughts on Star Trek as well, Luke? Oh boy, do I! Oh my god! All right. about, we'll we'll about do another sci-fi episode. Season we'll two. Luke. We'll so Luke just real fast, real fast, <laughs> Gary. You know the burn refers to Michael Burnham leaving the fucking that timeline and going forward. And if you know that's what it's going to be, because Michael Burnham is Jesus, saint, and savior. Anyway, <laughs> if you're watching the new Star Trek Discovery, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how that plays out. <laughs> no, that's what it's going to be. Anything that involves Michael Burnham being a hero is the only way that those writers will progress it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so back to the Christmas archetypes. <laughs> so what? what so what what, what? what would you say is your least favorite one at this point? You know, uh, what are you tired of seeing? I don't like seeing. I guess like the ones what? where like it's just uh, like. Uh, What's the one with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Put the cookie Jing, down. Uh, jingle, jingle all the, the way. way. Yeah. You know where it's like I got to run around and do What's all this crap. It's a great crap. movie. I you don't jingle fuck with way, Jingle man. All the Way. Yeah. Right, but like I'm, I'm tired of like I don't want to see any more of that. Okay. I think that 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 whole idea has kind of been played out. Are, are we back to this the superficiality of it, or are you like the Christmas with the Cranks? So what's National what's Lampoons, your, or is that what you're what's talking your about? Beef? My, what's your my beef be- on that? Like, what is it that sticks out to you about that that you find particularly egregious? Well, uh, again, with that movie, it's not anything particular, but like I wouldn't oh, want to see those themes. Like it's just too much. You just it's just trite. It's just been played. Yeah, I I don't know where you could take that that would be new and interesting. Yeah, and 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 a, and not have it just be kind of a cold remake or a soft reboot. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that that to me is what I wouldn't. And I don't even know how you would do that today. Oh, I got a Steam game for my kid. I don't know. Like yeah. you don't really get physical gifts for kids anymore like their video Well, and isn't it also strange that the entire movie is about commercial consumption and an obsession yep. about commercial consumption? Exactly. And that that's 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 so funny you could you could fit that into almost any decade since the 1930s. 
I was going to say the film. 50s, but yeah, you might be able to even you go, go back go since maybe, yeah, maybe the beginning. The 40s, yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Um, and, I, I mean, our, and, and sure, at the very end, mm-hmm. we, we go back to the theme. Right. Then, yeah, it's, it's just about, it's more about spending time. That family is more important than the possession, the possessional gift, and it's just about spending time with them yeah. and being there as opposed to, but you're right, it's just, all these archetypes, though, I'm looking at the list and we're talking about it for the last- Yeah, I've been looking you know, at it while we've been talking, too, and, yeah. It's just it's it's all overplayed. There's nothing new. There's yeah. nothing new. And same it, thing I brought up. Like since the pre two thousand, there's nothing original. You know, El- I mean, Elf was the one movie I could think of. Elf post- was it, well, you know, you know what? That's a good. You know. And I think Gary, maybe this is why Elf is so. I think you might be, you might be missing the forest for the trees here. The reason Elf is is so good to my mind, and I, I bet Johnny would agree with me I'm, on this. I'm with you. Is that Elf so was good. a very original concept. There wasn't even yeah, you could say that it has the archetypes of 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 Cain being the miser and like his dad having to learn how to be Christmas. Okay, sure, but there's nothing wrong with having archetypal themes so long as they're treated professionally and they're treated competently. Other than the miser, Elf was a pretty unique idea it was a pretty original concept the humor was not cliche christmas humor it was sort of a fusion of that late 90s kind of snl it was very much a will ferrell movie you know what i mean a lot of the humor was based on the elf character being kind of awkward and weird but you know i think there's uh there's a lot to that and i think you can't um i understand where you're coming from with thinking it's overrated but i think you have to give it a lot of props for being you know that was a pretty original concept particularly for a christmas movie at the time and i I can't think to johnny's point i can't think of of since then there's been a such a different take on a holiday film okay i will uh, i will give the movie another watch and uh you know see if my opinion has changed on it i'm willing to uh admit i was wrong when was um, the last time you saw it? Oh, it's probably been four or five years ago, I guess. Yeah, and it, okay. it may yeah, I mean, that's that, reasonable. Yeah, I mean, it may just it may just be that. Yeah, I mean, you're just it, the the humor may just not may. Not, but I just have a, such a hard time. I just I can't fathom that because I you know we've we've seen so many movies together over right the over the years you know and you love Will Ferrell in almost any, mm-hmm. anything he's in you know and the fact I think <clears> maybe it's the thing that. You're one of those people. You're like me, mm-hmm. and I, I mean, probably even like Luke. And about that, I think our group of friends in general kind of have this same mindset. If it's super popular with the masses, we typically, at the onset, we don't like it because everybody loves it. Then it's just mainstream, and we're like, ah, you know, fuck that. You know, there's there's classics here, there's classics there, and we may just not like it because everybody loves it <laughs> subconsciously. I think it's a subconscious thing. We just we're kind of just I, I think to not go with the stream. I, I think for me, what when when that happens, it's more um, not that I don't like it because it's popular, but I don't like it because I get tired of it. Like uh, mm-hmm. what's the, what's the what's the song that they play in all the stores all the time? Um, Johnny, uh, you and I should know Christmas, this. I gave you my heart. Yeah, by Wham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Wet ass pussy. Uh, no, that's uh, rap. Okay. Wet ass pussy. But like uh, the who is that? Car- Carrie Underwood? No. I don't, know. I, I don't know. No, uh, last Christmas. Oh, yeah, Cardi B is rap. <laughs> <laughs> last, yeah. last Christmas, I Gave You My Heart. Yeah. Uh, Taylor Swift did a remake of it, yeah. Who was the original one? Too? Um. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. Probably Taylor well, like, Swift, too. Well, well, uh, but anyway, like... like it, Clickety it, click, click. It, it, gets, it, it gets played uh, so much that it's just like... Just like... Too much of it, you know? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, can, I can totally understand that. Right, I get I'm, the I'm oversaturation, but surely... You Last can Christmas still appreciate, like I said, yeah. Okay. The original one, yeah. You can appreciate when those yeah. themes are executed well, right? Like, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, I mean, like, I don't know for Elf. As far as beyond that, like, I can get. I would say that that's the the strongest thing that Elf has is like you have to appreciate that that that's a pretty original concept for a holiday movie, especially given movie. Johnny's point that so many of these themes since the sixties particularly have just been so beaten to the ground. We've seen every one of these a million times and elf yeah. came along and did something that was kind of like, you know, this is a very, this is kind of the humor is different. 
holiday movies tend to have sort of kind of a more childish family oriented humor elf was very much not that you know what i mean peter dinklage Mm -hmm. i mean come on peter dinklage who doesn't (laughs) remember peter dinklage as like the rageaholic child author like that was one of the best kicking will ferrell running across the table and drop kicking him and putting him in a fucking boston crab lock like that was great that was that was (laughs) awesome yeah, it was it was pretty sweet. Peter uh, Dinklage was also in Game of Game Thrones. Game of Thrones, he was, and he was also is, in is that X Men First Class and Pixels. He wasn't Pixels. That's right. True. Which he is was, a highly underrated Adam high Sandler. score guy. I, I liked Pixels. I liked Pixels. I don't give a shit. I liked Pixels. <laughs> I thought it was great. <laughs> it's stupid, but um, so so let's move on really quick. To, okay. I don't, I don't think before we run out of time, I, I do want to uh, uh, go over character archetypes yes. that because we haven't really been able to talk about that outside <laughs> of the Scrooge or the Miser. Um, so Gary, I know you were kind of excited about this one um so take us through kind of the most common ones that that you had been seeing over the last you know okay well some odd decades you've been watching uh well films. You, you know we, we've talked about like uh you know like the the rich guy the miser like the scrooge the um sure. uh uh the banker from it's a wonderful life uh, mr potter mr potter lionel barrymore yeah that guy um so you know you got this like Scrooge. Drew barrymore's great great uncle yes um and Care, then you have like, who has essentially turned away from Christmas and compassion. Right, yeah. Right. And then you've got um, sort of like the, the the sage or the like the the wizard, which would the wise old Obi-Wan man. Obi Wan Kenobi. Yes, uh, would which would be like Santa maybe. In a lot of yeah, yeah. in a lot of stories, it would be yeah. Um, and then you've got uh, like the 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 trickster. Um, I think is another one of the archetypes. Uh, you know, like the person that. Uh, necessarily is trying to get ahead for themselves and they, you know, fool other people. Um, you know, like sure. the Grinch could be the trickster. Yeah. Same thing. Like you had brought up, you know, Vince Vaughn and Fred Claus. Yeah. Um, you have Jack Frost, Martin Short and as Jack, uh, as Jack Frost and uh, Santa Claus three. I know it's not a movie we like to admit was an actual film, mm. but it was. It, yes. Um, um, and then you've, uh, you know, you've got the divine, um, of course, in like the you know the Christ yeah, child or the, the Trinity, I saw the, that the Trinity. So are we are we more tired of seeing particular character archetypes or just like stereo like the stereotypical characters in Christmas films, or are we tired of the journeys they take as that character? So like the person that has to make it home on time for the holidays, or the guy that has to learn a valuable lesson, and I mean I guess that kind of combines both the story and the character. Mm-hmm. Um, it has to oh. be it has to be the journeys, right? Because they're archetyped yeah. for a reason. Like yeah. these, it's just like they even mention in this document here. They talk about the Jungian archetypes, and Jung even says when in his writings when he talks about archetypes and talks about subconscious mm-hmm. manifest, he says these are archetypes for a reason. These are not things that I've just made up. These are these are archetypes because they're essentially universal, relatable human behaviors and, and human human um, incentives, humans that would behave this way under these conditions. And so I don't think – like I'm not bored with redemption. I love seeing the triumph sure. of the human spirit. I'm yeah. bored with cliche tellings of redemption. Yeah. I'm bored with the same redemption story for the last 15 years. Right. Um, yeah, and I, I think that's, that's, that's fair. There's, there's an episode of Star Trek, the next generation called Darmok. Um, <laughs> Darmok and Jalab at Tanabra. Uh, yes. Um, in which, uh, you know, they talk about like this language is composed of archetypes, but it's a metaphor. That, yeah. Yeah. That, that aren't known to, to us. Julia on her balcony. Perfect. Okay. You get it, Luke. Um, well, yeah. So they're like, if we, if you hear Juliet on her balcony, you, as someone in our society, uh, well, maybe not kids nowadays, but like if you read uh, Shakespeare, you like understand all of the the emotions about that, the love, the longing, the loss, the uncertainty. Um, and if you're from a like somebody who has no concept who Juliet is or what she's nothing. doing on her, yeah, it's like I have no idea. So um, as uh, Jung. Uh, Mr. Jung said, um, you know, they're archetypes for a reason because they're part of our culture. Right. So if we had to go through, so it changed, staying in the same topic, but changing gears a little bit. If you guys had to pick just a handful of the most classic 
Christmas characters of all time. Not mm. even like not even a not a not a stereotypical character, like actual characters like the Grinch or Charlie Brown, whatever, or Santa. Um, <laughs> Charlie Brown. Who would who yeah. Uh, who who would you guys who would you guys pick? Give me give me one or two. What just pops into your head? What's a what's a classic one? You say the name, Scrooge. everybody knows what movie they're from. Scrooge. Scrooge. Okay, there's one. Oh. Gary? Uh, Jesus? Je- I meant from film. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's good. That's but that's good. You know, that's Jesus? fair. That's fair. Okay. Okay, I was thinking more like I don't know, like uh, Our culture, Ralphie, like Ralphie from A Christmas Story. Okay. You know, yeah. or uh, you know, uh, you have Jesus. Kevin McAllister from Home Alone. Smart okay. ass. He's a Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Or okay, yeah. Or like Frosty, Clark Griswold. Yeah. You know. It's the most okay, Christian right? Christ. Fucking well, Christ, bro. <laughs> well, <laughs> well uh, they they had a movie that came out. Um, kind of digressing, but it was called like the Nativity Story. Um, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, when did that come out? Like in two thousand eight or so. But it was it was uh, it was interesting to see like a movie that was like you know about the religious event rather than uh, just sort of you know uh, the the uh, you know buying gifts or whatever. You know all the movies that we've been talking about are just kind of around that. So it was interesting right. to see a movie that was like that. Uh, ironically, has become the unusual movie to see you know right i don't think they've made a nativity movie since then i don't geez i don't think so i don't remember the last time i watched a nativity theme i mean i saw daddy's home 2 with you and hall a couple years ago and that had a nativity scene in it oh yeah (laughs) but that's the last thing i was wondering where you were going (laughs) where john cena throws a snowball at marky mark and john you've been hit by john cena no i and i guess where (laughs) Uh, and good point. But I guess where I was going with uh, where you find the most classic characters, I'm just going to play devil's advocate. I'm going to play the cynic for a second. And if you look at a lot of those characters, with the exception of Jesus, mm. with the exception of Jesus, uh, Yeshua most, of those, most of those most of those people at their core are, are actually selfish dicks. Yeah. And they they have that's back. the point. That's the yeah, point. Yeah. 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 I don't know, I mean, if, there's yeah. no hero's journey if you don't have that. Right. You have to have that's like, well, and I wouldn't say most. I'm sh- certainly a lot of them are. But there are many yeah. Christmas stories about Tim, about Tiny Tim, about the Marty McFly, <laughs> about the little boy who has nothing and who comes up and gets his Christmas miracle. Right. But for the ones that aren't. Yeah, there are certainly there are certainly some to the other effect. But I think that's kind of the. It's the point. It is the it's, point. It, it if helps you're having a redemption line. story, you know, you're going to have you, you have to have somebody that needs to be redeemed. Yeah. Right. And so you can argue like, OK, that's bright and contrived. No, not everybody gets redeemed on Christmas. OK, fair enough. Then half the Christmas movies are are fat on the bone. But that's irrelevant relative to the theme of redemption. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Right. So I, I guess what, what I was getting at with the question was, can you guys name can you guys name an actual story, a Christmas story or a Christmas film where we see the protagonist who's on a hero's journey that doesn't require any sort of redemption at all? Like a perfect protagonist? Pretty much. Like or a protagonist near, near that starts out without any need for growth? I don't think they've ever written a story like that. Yeah, okay. it was, there would be no point in well, having that kind I was, of a story, I was gonna, right? The protagonist. I was going to say, have... what about what about Buddy the Elf? No, I think he needs lots of growth. I think Buddy the Elf is He's probably good. the most. He has the hugest development of any Christmas character. He starts out the movie as completely naive, completely unself-aware, and completely unaware of what the truth is Buddy's of the world around him. Though. So he doesn't have. I mean, all if yeah, if, if he not, never that's if they never told it's him not he was about, a, it's not okay, about, if they never told him that he was a human and he was never if they kept up the charade until he died like let's say he never went to New York to find his father no, because the nothing naivete, would have changed he was still a good person naivete, that is hard. that's fine but the naivete is not about him being an elf the naivete is about human nature the naivete is about what motivates his father what Christmas really is. The, him being an elf is is just symptomatic of his greater. It's it's. I mean, elf is a coming of age of story. It really, oh, it's about. Like I said, plain devil's advocate. I mean, it, like, it's, it's not a. No, I understand. But to to make that point to to your devil. I mean, that's where that that's where that argument falls apart. Is that there is growth, and I mean, there's huge growth. And there's a huge development where where he starts out and where he ends up. 
I mean, he's not at all the same character, from, you know, from the from Act One to Act Three. Not at all. There's 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 a huge amount of development. Okay. I would say probably more development than any protagonist in a Christmas themed movie. I mean, even Ralphie from A Christmas Story, he learns that he's going to shoot his eye out. Even he doesn't change it develop in the way that I think Elf does. Well, he's also a, he's also a kid too, and, and, and I think that you can't. Um... Like, because Buddy starts off, you know, so naive, like he, you're just not even, he's not even aware of what being an asshole is. So if you don't even, it's right. like the Garden you of Eden. I don't even yeah. think he's an asshole. I think he's just childish. No, it's like a, yeah. when you, when you, Johnny, you know this, you worked with children. Children aren't assholes. They just don't have a conception beyond the self when right. they're younger because they're Their two years old developed. and they're in and they're. Yeah. Right. It, Minds aren't only... fully developed, so they ate it. So that's what I viewed Buddy as. His buddy wasn't an asshole. Buddy was just childish. Mm-hmm. And the whole movie is about him kind of coming of age and realizing, like, oh, this is what the world really is like. This is what Christmas really means. This is what I really am, and this is what my place in things really is. Right. But if he's a product of his, if he's a product of his society or community that he's built up in, provided that none of that information had ever been passed on to him, and they figured out ways to placate him and accommodate him the mm-hmm. entire his entire life until death then he would never have had to have any means for that growth outside of him naturally being a human and that's part of human nature i get what you're saying so you you but, wanted elf to uh, be basically the no. truman show too did you say again you, i didn't hear you you wanted elf to be the truman show too <laughs> of course <laughs> where he's just in this cocoon <laughs> right of, yeah it's it's just no. interesting I mean, to think about. I, it wouldn't have been a very good the, movie, obviously, if that were the case. But that's you know. the whole reason of telling a story. Like there is no movie Elf without Ricky Bobby, without Elf Ricky Bobby develop. You know what I mean? Like sure. that's why, and I think that's why Elf is uh, was again to to Gary. Sorry, brother, but I think that's why <laughs> Elf was so loved is because everybody remembers learning that Santa Claus wasn't real. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, we need whoa. to let children know about. Hang on. Wait. You know, what? Santa's whoa. not fucking real. Oh, I'm going to have to edit this part out. I knew Krampus was lying to me. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Only well, the evil, I demented Santa is real. Do you know Can't... what I mean? Like everybody has that moment in life where you realize, like, I'm not a kid anymore. I was nine. You were nine. I was nine. <laughs> My uncle unzipped his pants and showed me his <laughs> penis. Oh. <laughs> I guess because I guess, yeah, you really can't even in the most uplifting, what many would consider the most uplifting holiday. Like I said, many, not all Mm. uplifting holiday of the year, uplifting moment and time period of the year. There's no there's no there's no perfect protagonist. Oh, well, other than in the Star Wars movies with Mary, no, Mary no, Sue. We're not talking about a Star Wars Christmas special. We've already gone over that. that oh, but, we don't talk but, about that. But that's the point is because a perfect protagonist is unrelatable. Nobody cares because right. there's no there's no challenge. There's no investment with a perfect protagonist because what would the perfect you cons- protagonist overcomes right. any obstacle. What would you cons- what would we consider Santa Claus? So in the quintessential, the very first Christmas film, I would say still considered to this day, um, would be Miracle on 34th Street, the original, the very first sure. one. Um, okay. We have we have Santa in there as obviously the little girl is the protagonist, but mm-hmm. Santa gets a lot of a lot of airtime in that one. Yeah. Um, where where's True where's man, bro. yeah? I mean, I've had people argue yeah. with me that Santa was the protagonist in that, but I was if you if you your argument, Luke, I'm just like he didn't really grow at all. He just he was there as he was a theme. The character was a theme himself. Mm-hmm. Um, he is the sage. Is yeah. What you were talking about. He is the you know he is the Obi Wan or he right. is the Gandalf or he is whatever. Wizard on the side of the yeah. road. Right. A, a movie where Santa did grow was Ernest Saves Christmas. That's, that's true. I just want to point. That I was out. wondering when you were going to bring that up. I was like, you know, we haven't really talked about that one. We talked about Ernest Saves Halloween multiple scared times. Scared stupid. Scared stupid. I'm sorry. Scared stupid. <laughs> that would be pretty. <laughs> Great title. Movie, by Ernest the way. is scared stupid. <laughs> and then the sub Ernest saves Halloween. <laughs> um, and I would just, I would like to see, I think to, I guess. But how do you do to, it? How would you do it? Mm-hmm. How do you write a Christmas movie where Marty McFly doesn't get Jen at the end of the day? What is also, because I can tell you right now, Johnny, as someone who has $10 to spend on a movie and who doesn't particularly <laughs> care for much of what pop culture does, if someone said, hey, there's this great movie about where the protagonist fails at life and doesn't get anything he wants, I would say, great, I'm not going to go see it. 
because I don't want to watch that movie. I want to watch a movie that inspires me. I want to watch a movie where I, I see the protagonist doing something great, and it makes me feel good. And that's where it we makes differ, me want I to do something. Love to well, see no, but that then I wonder movie. is so where do you where's where's the mo- where's the incentive for people to want to see that other than well this is different. That's it. That's the incentive. This is different. It's not the same classic. It's not the same classic tropes that we see every single fucking year, year after year. And look, this this is just me. This is just me. Okay, but you, know, you can't just cynical, have but. negative cynicism. There has to be. Even if the protagonist doesn't get what he wants, the protagonist has to come out in some way better than he was before, even if it's just a personal uh, lesson. Doesn't. So I, what do you just want him? So to. what are you doing? So what I, are you? I doing? can't believe that. Luke is arguing that Christmas movies need to be happy, and Johnny is the cynic on Christmas movies. This is insane. <laughs> this is completely reversed. It's a Christmas miracle. It's a, <laughs> Gary's like, I've been trying to accomplish oh, no. this for years. Um, no, no, given I, the date, given the date, this is a festivist miracle. Oh, <laughs> it's a holiday for the rest of us. I've got to add my like, grievances, <laughs> and you're all going to What is that? Y'all going to listen? I've got a lot of problems with you people. You people. That's right. <laughs> Uh, mystery story. No, but I mean, like, I understand saturation of the market. I understand cliche right. storytelling. But I mean, like, it's one thing to say, let's not do what's been done. It's another thing to lay out, how do you do that? That's exactly how you do it. You take the, you take so what's, what, how what do has you tell a story where the hero the loses. Opposite. And, he, do and do I don't. So, no, no, no. How do you do it in a way that I, as the audience, don't walk away thinking, well, what the fuck did I do that? Why did I watch that movie? Oh, God. I mean, you would have to probably add. I mean, that's I'd the have trick, to, right? I, Anybody let, can tell a sad, to, Well, any, give me a couple months to figure out the story and okay, write the screenplay, I mean, and then I'll that's let you know. The thing, right? <laughs> Anybody can tell a story about bad things happening because that's life. It happens all the time. It's about why do I care? At these bad things maybe, maybe the maybe the hero had some maybe the protagonist or hero they went on their journey and they were trying to accomplish something for themselves and at the end maybe they died and they failed at the mission but in turn they ended up changing the lives of a bunch of other people around them and that was the positive message so at so, the end. so johnny and uh, you're back to cliche christmas story of self-sacrifice but, and but like no when is when actually that that's one that i have not seen can you name a movie where well okay, that's sure fair that's one. fair uh, when you know i, I mean? say cliche i don't mean cliche in the execution the execution is very different but the theme is ultimately he gave up his life just like jesus did and sacrificed you know what i mean like yeah but it's not we common anymore, is my point. Oh, no, so it's if, not, and that, that would be a, a unique execution. But if you, we want to play this game of saturation, how far down do we want to go? You're saturated because your methodology is different, but your message is basically the same. So w- would you be interested in uh, like a movie that was kind of themed like The Diary of Anne Frank, where she doesn't live and like she like the protagonist in that doesn't win? And it just kind of teaches a message to those that come after. Correct. Okay. The sacrificial, the sacrificial lamb. Look, I mean, yeah, it goes back to yeah. If you're gonna exactly what Luke was saying, it goes back to you know, it goes back to the, the sacrifice of Jesus. You know, if you're if you're a Christian and believe in that, and even then, the story Wait. itself, the story itself is is it's it's a it's a good lesson. Like it's got a you know, it's like all right, you know, sacrifice for others. There's you know, there's nothing wrong with like saying, hey, maybe do things for other people. Sure, absolutely, and I'm okay. and I got no problem with that at all. No okay. problem with that. But it is not something that has been a common archetype or a common trope in any story or that's for fair. any character. That's fair, that we've that's seen. fair. Yeah. It'd be it'd just be interesting yeah. to see. I'd I, like to see something new. I, I've you know, never seen the sure. Diary of Anne Frank Christmas edition. <laughs> So let me ask yeah, you this. Is it, would it be hack of me to say, like, Passion of the Christ Christmas movie or no? I mean, technically, it's an Easter movie. Yeah. I mean, yeah, maybe Easter. <laughs> or I don't know. But I mean, it is. I mean, I understand that Jesus obviously wasn't. That was Saturnalia right, and, right. or whatever it was, the Roman holiday. But mm-hmm. my point is, like, <clears throat> I mean, it is Christ's mass. I mean, it is literally Christ's mass. Surely... That would be the quintessential Christ's mass movie, the movie about Christ. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I I, I wouldn't say that uh, uh, The Passion of the Christ, I don't know. It, 
That doesn't seem like a Christmas movie to me. No, but I, I you know, uh-huh, but it, here you go. It doesn't have the setting. It doesn't have the setting. Because it doesn't have the earlier. setting. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why I think we all. I think we can all agree. I think we finally found a happy medium that we can all agree on. It has to have bits and pieces of of those. The that's what I've been of, saying this whole time. Right. I'm there. Yeah, I think we're. I think we're all agreeing with each other. I think yeah, we we're all saying the same thing. Um, abs- absolutely. Um, unfortunately, guys, we have run out of time for this week's episode. Um, we are at our at our breaking point. Um, Luke, thank you so much for joining us. It was a lot of fun having you. Um, hopefully, we can get it. you back on here pretty soon for uh, another episode. It'd be awesome. Talking um, about Star Wars. We could talk oh, about Star- I'll I'll get talk on for a sci-fi Star Wars episode. Or <laughs> Star Trek. Um, so before we before we go, Gary, I don't know. Did you do your one liners oh, yeah, for this yeah. week? Okay. So really, we got two little things we're going to do really fast. Uh, Luke, Gary, I'll let you take. This is Gary's little segment. He just implemented a few weeks ago. So. <laughs> Okay, uh, Luke, I'm going to give you a uh, a log line for a movie that they rejected. Can you do a Christmas movie? Yes. Okay. Um, this, so it'll be a Christmas movie that they rejected. Um, so, for example, old lady tells a story about a boat on a different boat would be the movie Titanic. Luke, yours is a well-planned vacation suffers a setback when the weather doesn't cooperate. Okay. A young man must find his independence. Fuck. I think I got that. Can I, can I phone a friend? <laughs> can sure. I phone a friend? Sure. <laughs> okay. Shit. I don't have my phone. Johnny. You, you want to phone me in? <laughs> okay. Hello? What's the answer? <laughs> <What are> you... <laughs> I, I think it's Home Alone. It's Home Alone. Okay. All right. Yep. <laughs> Kevin yep. McAllister, oh, baby. Of course. Home, home Alone. Wait. Home Alone <laughs> 1. The yep. first one. Right. Not, not, not Lost in New York. <laughs> okay. Yes, that's right. Um, God damn it, of course. <laughs> all right, uh, Johnny. All right. Uh, yours this week is visitors do not respect the guest list at a Christmas party at an L.A. office building, and one of the right. executive's husbands is not happy about it. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, it sounds like Miracle on 34th Street. It's pretty but close. It very, it very well could be Jingle All the Way. But I'm going to go out on a limb and say Die Hard, though. Yes, you are correct <laughs> oh. about that, sir. <laughs> Very good, very good. Thank what you all for fuck? playing. Good ones this week, Gary. Gary, uh, Gary tricked Damn everybody it. last week and gave them all just normal movies that weren't Christmas related, and everyone was really confused. Yeah. They're like, "That's not a cri- The Shining's not a Christmas movie. Forrest Gump isn't a Christmas movie. Gary's like, "But it has snow. It has. It has. It has. It has, it has part of the Wait. setting is snow." Well, what was the tie-in for Forrest Gump? Where was there's literally no Christmas in Forrest Gump. I know. Yeah, we, that's, we talked about that last there's time. There's New Year's, yeah. but there's no. There's no Christmas. Um, oh, there is New Year's, yeah. but that's it's not New Year's, it's Christmas. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh so one other thing that we have before uh before we go every week, Luke, is we uh let our panel go ahead and give a uh, recommendation for our listeners uh to go ahead and watch uh, for that upcoming week. Preferably something that has to do with the topic of that particular episode. Um, so I'll give you a second, you know, maybe you've got a, a film you want to, you want to bring up, um, Gary, I'll let you start us off this week. What recommendation do you have for our listeners? I, uh, I don't think anybody recommended it last time. Okay. Um, and, uh, it's kind of a fun, uh, uh, more modern movie. Uh, sure. I'm, it's bad Santa with, uh, Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah. No um, one's recommended that. Yeah. One yet. It's, uh, definitely, uh, a, a story about a man who learns important life lessons of love and family. Um, and the ties that bind us, not. <laughs> but uh, yes, if you like irreverent R-rated Christmas. humor, <laughs> uh, Bad Santa is pretty fun. Okay, all right, all right. Um, okay, well, I'll give Luke another minute. Um, for this week, I feel like we've gone over. I've already talked about Christmas Story, Elf, It's Wonderful Life, like my top three favorite of all time. Mm-hmm. I'm going to recommend a movie that is based during Christmas time, not necessarily a Christmas film, but... I typically watch it every December. Uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Okay. Uh, with Ron oh, Downey Jr. Val Kilmer. Is that seriously what you're oh, going to recommend? Did you just no, pull a Neil on him? such a good movie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it is a good movie. Uh, uh, basically, it's just a, it's just a film. Uh, it's a buddy cop detective movie, basically. I'm not going to give the entire movie away. Ligato. Uh, that's right. It's like a um, 30-year-old film, Johnny. It's okay. God damn, it's so good, though. Val Kilmer's that's basically... That's the best... It's it's pretty awesome. It's Val Kilmer plays a thief turned actor in Private Eye, and uh, Robert Downey. He is giving advice to the lead of a f- upcoming feature film, which is played by Robert Downey Jr. by accident, essentially. I, such a good... um, I know, dude. And basically, they end up solving a. They join forces with Michelle Monaghan and solve this really big 
mystery between the three of them and just the dialogue is so fast paced so well and written. it's so witty it's so it's one of the honestly it's one of the best written movies uh like 2000 yeah, 2010 definitely. it's a top definitely. Script. it's a top so script, well like, done yeah the banter between the two of them is just so spot on it's, it's so, so perfect brilliant. what happens when they drag the leg do you think they'll find my pistol <laughs> <laughs> it just smacks him upside the back. Oh, he's back there he goes, you so feel bad. what he's talking about? Feel badly. He's like, no, ad- badly is an adverb, fuckhead. Who taught you grammar? Go get the fucking... <laughs> it's, it's honestly, it's the last time I saw Val Kilmer in anything so good. at all. And and also good. Um, the, 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 the last portion of the movie is based during Christmas, so it's got the setting. Yeah. Um, I guess but, uh, Murder in Bruges I, is also during Christmas, isn't it? In Bruges, yeah. In Bruges, yeah, yeah. In Bruges, yeah, yeah. In Bruges, yes. Yeah, yeah. That no Martin, murder, that just Martin, in Bruges. Martin um, McDonagall, I think is the, the screen, screenwriter's name. Anyways, um, yeah, so that's my recommendation for this week. I'll have a little more Christmassy one hopefully next week. But uh, Luke, why don't you uh, wrap us up? Any, any Christmas films or holiday films you might recommend uh, our listeners today? You know what? I'm going to go with A Muppet Christmas Carol because I think that to me, Michael Caine's Ebenezer Scrooge is just the definitive Ebenezer Scrooge. It's so perfect. It really is. And Mm -hmm. uh, it was obviously we all know the book, but uh, when I was a child, I just that was my first experience watching a Christmas Carol of any form. I never saw the old versions, and obviously there's been some versions that have come out since then. So for me, when I read the original Dickens Christmas, when I think about a Christmas Carol, I always think of those. And I love. I mean, we're Marley and Marley. Marley. Our hearts were painted Back to this. I mean, that they scared the black. hell out of me. <laughs> And the, the ghost of Christmas pa- of future, who was, was basically was the Grim so Reaper. Right. And I didn't, that's how I know Michael Caine. I was such a young guy when I saw the original, uh, the Muppet Christmas Carol, that like every yeah. time I saw Michael Caine after that, I was like, oh, that's Ebenezer Scrooge from the Muppet fucking movie. So it's a good, <laughs> I think that even as an adult, you know, it's, I, you almost don't even have to defend the Muppets because everybody can respect like what that is and can, can appreciate, like even Ricky Gervais, who is probably one of the best comedians of our time is like, yeah, who doesn't fucking love the Muppets? I'll do a Muppet movie f- for free if I could. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he did, you know, I mean, he did his Muppet movie. But so, the, great. It's, you know, and and based, you know, everybody knows that Dickens and and, and kind of defined the modern day take on what Christmas was and moved Absolutely. it from this pagan holiday into like this, the contemporary way that we look at it. And so it's great. A Muppet Christmas Carol. Everybody loves it. Kids love it. Family loves it. I love it. And that's what counts. Yes. Luke loves it. And that's what counts. <laughs> Anyways, Order. guys. Uh, uh, yeah. Once again, Luke, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we'll hope to have you back soon. Uh, for all of us here at I Don't Give a Flick, I'm Johnny. I'm Gary. We'll see you next week. Happy holidays. Thank you for tuning in to Leadfeather Productions' podcast of I Don't Give a Flick. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast so that you never miss an episode. Podcasts are available on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube, and everywhere podcasts are hosted. I Don't Give a Flick is hosted and produced by Johnny Blackburn, Gary Elmore, and Neil Riley. Executive producer, Johnny Blackburn. Technical director, editor, and audio mixer, Gary Elmore. I Don't Give a Flick is a Leadfeather production. Copyright Leadfeather Productions 2020.